Amen. Peace to the Lord. Let us be standing. Let us open our Bible. I know that the programming, there's supposed to be a Brazilian church, a Brazilian pastor to be here. He couldn't be here tonight. Lots of rain. But tomorrow he's going to be there at the seminar. Today, we're going to have to tolerate. Swallow. Was it my fault? It's really loud, isn't it? Let's go. First, Book of Kings. Chapter 19, verse 8. <laughs> So he arose and ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel for have forsaken your convent, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets. With the swords, I alone am left. And they seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mound before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was Elijah heard. The church may be seated. talks about a little bit of the life of prophet Elijah of Elijah a man valiant used by the Lord God did lots of miracles through the minister of Elijah And toward the adversary of our souls, lifted in a form really big on his life. Elijah went against a fight really horrible. At a point to make him. Discouraged. He said that he wanted to kill himself. At this moment, tomorrow, Elijah wouldn't live anymore. And this front went into Elijah's ears. 
He left everything, went away through the desert. Now Elijah already said. Practically giving up, he went underneath a tree. And there he wished to die. Feeling forgotten, humiliated, abandoned. And when he sleeps, the Lord shows an angel to him. And the angel brings in his hands a vessel of water and bread. Verse 9, verse 6 says exactly this. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake bread on cows and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. The tiredness of Elijah was a lot that he ate that bread brought from the angel and he drank the water and he went to sleep. Then he was woken up again by the angel and he said, eat and drink again because you have a path ahead of you. And this path is going to be long. He did exactly that. In the verse we started to drink, the read said that he was woken up the second time. Already ate. And he starts to walk again. And he hides in a cave. And in this cave, Elijah with the same feelings, same weren't concerns, and the Lord starts to speak to Elijah. Lord, I was really zealous. I killed prophets and with my sword, destroyed your altars. In that moment, the Lord starts to talk to Elijah. The Lord starts to demonstrate to Elijah the right project of God for his life. What does the servant need? My brethren, the life that we live, the servant of God needs to have exactly this that was brought to him. Bread and water. This is what we need to keep. This is what we need in our path. Because we pass through this world. Because our journey is really long. We have an eternity waiting for us. We are here. Suffering like Elijah suffered. Being persecuted like Elijah was. It's something that's way bigger than the man imagines that the Lord has prepared for us. So we can't live here in this life keeping nothing more than our experience with the Lord. <clears throat> because the Lord has sustained us. He's brought us exactly what we need. Bread talks about the Lord, the Word of God, the water, the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that takes us, that takes us look for the satisfaction, the Holy Spirit that makes us believe in the Lord, that makes us believe in the Word of God, that makes us have experiences with the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that makes us listen to the Lord. It's nothing that the world offers. It isn't, it isn't the preachers of this life. It isn't the happiness of this life. It isn't what the world offers us. But it's what that makes us walk to, towards this eternity. 
we are being fed by the word of God. Hear the voice of God. There is no bigger experience to the man than to hear the voice of God. This is what Elijah heard. He heard the voice of God. There isn't something better for a servant of God, for a Christian, for someone that is desperate out there, for someone that is about to take their life, than to hear the voice of God. There isn't anything greater than this. Because when you hear His voice, you feel marked by it. <coughs> When you hear the voice of God, things change in you. You don't have doubt of that experience. You don't have doubt at all that the Lord has talked to you. Because God knows us. He knows the de every detail of our life. He goes with us. He knows who created us. He knows what we need. He knows what we're passing through. He knows minutes, seconds of our life. And there's nothing more than to hear the word of God. Because when the Lord speaks with us, He, he speaks in the depth of our heart. He speaks about what's troubling us, of what's bothering us and what we are feeling because the voice of God that's what it is there is no other way for us to get to the Lord from not the invitation of the Lord <clears throat> because when God sp speaks to us you will never forget the moment time the first time you'll have the first experience and you hear the voice of the Lord, you will never forget. You could even tomorrow, later, leave the Lord. But you will never forget that one day the Lord spoke to you. <clears throat> you will never forget your call. You will never forget your first experience, the day that the Lord revealed himself to you. The day the Lord shows you that He is the Savior of your life. The day that you actually left the presence of the Lord. It's not this peace that we heard out there. Preach from the leaders. That what they want to propose. It's what they know what peace is. But the peace that we find in the Lord. The peace that we find when we come up to the altar of God. The peace when we pray to the Lord. This peace calms down our hearts. This peace strengthens us. It brings us comfort. As this peace comes from the Lord to the person of God. One day you could even forget, leave. But you will never forget his call. No matter where you go. Even in the hospital, right when you're about to die. Your last seconds of life after a vehicle accident. The moment he goes and hugs your soul. He takes your worry and you rest in Him. This experience is marking for us. Only the true servants that are faithful can have. No one knows this out there. To listen to the voice of God, it's hard, but it's real. For the world, it's crazy. It's impossible. But for us, no. This happens every day in our lives. This is our experience. 
This is what strengths in us to come back forever to the to come tonight to church and say that the Lord is gonna speak to me. Tonight I'ma pray. Tonight I'ma kneel down. I'ma sing some songs alone in my car, leaving my house, and God's gonna speak to me. <coughs> I'm going to have one day in the presence of the Lord. This for us, for us is trembling to hear the voice of God. It's interesting that the psalmist expressed this, put in words what he felt in the experience of the God. The voice of God is powerful is full of majesty the voice of the Lord breaks the trees and he makes us drop like the calves the voice of the Lord separates the fire from the flames. The voice of the Lord shakes the deserts. The voice of the Lord when woman gives birth. It's trembling this. The spirits of this servant. He tries to say, where is the Hear the voice of God. It's trembling. It's majesty. Because this is what he feels. This is what he felt. When he heard the voice of the God. Now I want to ask you this. Did you already hear the voice of God? Have you heard the voice of God? God has spoken to you. Have you felt this? This secureness, this certainness, and this tranquility, and to know that the Lord is your is your Lord. If you haven't heard, if you already heard in the past, never heard it again. This night. The Lord wants to speak to you. The Lord wants to reveal to you like He did. Or He never did, or you never heard. So that tonight you can open your heart and say, Lord, I need, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear my name being called. I want to have the certainness that my name is written in the book of life we don't have this power we don't have this privilege to do this the more that we want to we can't because this is in the hands of God this night you can hear the voice of God And you're going to have the certainness when he speaks to you. You know why? Because he doesn't speak in any way. Like here, Elijah. You thought he was in the wind. A strong wind that breaks the rocks. But God wasn't in that. And then an earthquake. And But he wasn't in the earthquake. And there was a fire, but he also wasn't in the fire. You know where he was? In a gentle voice. This moment, Elijah knew that it was God speaking. And this night, God wants to speak to you in this way. In a soft and tender way. God doesn't treat the man in the base of fire, 
No. Lord doesn't look at our form of life. He doesn't see us that way. He doesn't have the power of God, the grace of God. It's way bigger than everything that we see here. <clears throat> and when he speaks with us, he speaks with a soft and tender voice. And this is how the Lord wants to speak to you tonight. And when he speaks with you, you're going to know that it was him. If someone's speaking to you like that, through the wind, through the earthquake, through the fire, it's not him speaking. God doesn't treat what that he created. He doesn't treat what he put in this world. He doesn't treat the man like this. But he treats the man with love, with grace, with mercy. That's what Elijah wanted. That's what he needed. Asking to die. But when God revealed to him, he had the certainness that God was with him. He wasn't alone anymore. He wasn't being persecuted alone. He wasn't about to die alone. But he learned that everything that could have happened to him, God was going to be with him. And that's what makes us happy. To know that the battles are there and what we are going to be taking with us is our experience. Not what we need in this life. But what's going to make us go to the altar of the Lord is our experiences. To hear the voice of the Lord. To hear this soft and tender voice. The moment that God speaks to you. The form that he speaks with me. The moment that we are. The moment of soon. The moment of end. Lots are worried about this time. At this night. In particular, a man. He's gathering supplies. And he knows that the end is coming. But he doesn't have knowledge. So he looks for the things of this world to make necessity to him. And this night, he's giving to this man experience. Because what you need to keep is nothing of this world. The bread and the word of God. The water. That is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Because with this bread and this water, it's with the word of God. And discern. And you're going to realize when the Lord is speaking to you. Because the man, when he is tired, he doesn't understand things. But when he is with that hunger, the thirst, then he understands the voice of God. This voice, soft and tender, when he speaks to our hearts. We're going to hear a song. At this moment, you're going to be talking to the Lord. If this experience that you had with the Lord said this tonight, he wants to renew that. He wants to show to you that he still is the Lord of your life. He is the God of gods.
be standing one more time and that uh, you heard Elijah he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave suddenly a voice came to him he said what are you doing here Elijah people sometimes they want to be hidden in the caves lots of people hide themselves What's to be be hiding in a cave is to learn that there is battle. Lots of people live like this. Elijah, like that, in the cave, full of his reasoning. Everybody abandoning me. I'm the only one alone here, thinking. In his humanity, Elijah thinking he's better than all the other people. Abandoned. Lots of people live like this in their caves, their problems. Given excessive worth for their problems. But when Elijah left and he heard the voice of the Lord, he asked, what are you doing here, Elijah? Because man wasn't made to hide in caves. Lazarus was hiding in a cave. But Jesus went there and said, Get out of there. Come out. Because the Lord, because a man wasn't, a man was made to be like Adam and Eve, hearing the voice of the Lord. Every day, the man was made to be free. Free, free of will to obey the Lord. What are you doing here? What are you doing? Where are you? 
giving worth to your problems, to your difficulties. Leave all this behind and live freely in the presence of the Lord where there will be the truth and the truth will liberate us. We are free. The Lord already lives in our hearts. He won our battles. We can serve the Lord freely. We don't have any slaves. We are free to glorify this marvelous God, to understand that He loves us, to live this projection of salvation. Let's have one power of one word of glorification to the Lord. Because the Lord, your voice brings us the love that we need. We glorify you, Lord, because you're the true love. You condensed, Lord. You offered us eternal life. Your hands always bring man to your presence, Lord. That's why. Because you are marvelous, Lord. Because you are our love eternal. We glorify you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Church, Lord, accept our word, our glorification, and take us in peace. We give our word for tomorrow, the seminar, that nothing can steal our blessing. In the name of Jesus, every obstacle, every difficulty, that tomorrow we can hear your voice. You can, we can render to your voice to give notice to your voice. Take us in peace that we can have a night in your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. And the grace and, and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon all of us for now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. Only a couple of verses about the seminar. It will start at 9 a.m. From an hour and 20 from here. From car from here to there. An hour and 20 minutes. You're going to see what, what time you have to leave from your house. Someone's going to start at 9 with the, with the cafe. And 10 first lesson. And lunch, and then the second part. We're not going to have churches here tomorrow in the morning. So churches all day tomorrow is canceled. And also every, everywhere here in Florida. And if you still don't, didn't give your name, and you still don't have a, a ride, look for us. And then we can arrange a ride and see if you can go. Amen? Yes, a question. The address. It's in the groups. And if you don't have, we're going to show you. Sometimes it was showed in one group. We're going to ask the captains to pass the addresses to people. The purchase can be, purchases can be right here. Any purchase that anything can be. To, you can get there even earlier to know the location. Pastors, any. Address. Okay. 
Todo mundo está indo. Não, aqui. Aqui, eu for aqui que endereço. And people that want whoever needs a ride, I got two spaces in my car. Two two rides right there can be made. And right here, more two. Elijah, two more. A <laughs> bingo. <laughs> so people can program. It's really good to for a lot of people. Divide the gasoline to help. Amen. Peace to the Lord. Acho que eu estou fazendo. Agora o Félix, né?